in the hushed intimacy of their Victorian townhouse, nestled amidst the cobblestone labyrinth of Gaslight Alley, Elias Thorne and his wife, Amelia, lay adrift in the silken embrace of slumber. The gaslights outside cast a faint, flickering glow through the lace curtains, bathing the room in a spectral light. Each sputter and hiss held a story, a testament to the long and storied history cradled within the labyrinthine alleys of Gaslight Alley. A sudden, insistent clamor shattered the peaceful tableau. A grandfather clock in the corner chimed a discordant 3.13 a.m., its brass face seeming to leer menacingly in the half-light. Elias, jolted from a dream of sun-drenched meadows, blinked away the remnants of sleep. A cold sweat prickled his skin despite the unseasonable warmth in the room. Disquiet. A serpent coiling in his gut, tightened its grip. Never in their ten years of marriage had they awakened at such an ungodly hour. Amelia, usually a light sleeper, remained undisturbed, her gentle breaths a counterpoint to the pounding of his heart. Fear, sharp and unwelcome, gnawed at the edges of his consciousness. Was it illness? A premonition. Some unspoken danger swirling in the labyrinth and streets outside? Hesitantly, Elias reached for Amelia, his touch a silent plea for reassurance. Still asleep. Elias, unable to shake the gnawing dread, slipped from the bed with a silent curse. Padding across the plush Persian rug, he drew back the heavy drapes, revealing the deserted street below. The gaslights cast a sickly yellow glow on the wet cobblestones, amplifying the unsettling stillness of the night. The usual cacophony of nocturnal creatures, the stray cat's wail, the rhythmic scuffling of rats, was absent, replaced by an unnerving silence. He scanned the alleyway, his heart hammering a frantic rhythm against his ribs. Nothing. Just the usual spectral shadows dancing in the uneven gaslight. Yet, the sense of unease remained, a persistent echo in the vast emptiness of the pre-dawn hour. Returning to the bed, Elias perched on the edge his gaze fixed on Amelia's peaceful slumber. Her brow furrowed slightly, a fleeting expression of unease flickering across her face before dissolving back into serenity. Was it just a coincidence? Or was this unsettling awakening mirrored in her dreams? Time crawled by, each tick of the grandfather clock a hammer blow against the silence. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the first tendrils of dawn began to paint the eastern sky with a delicate blush of rose. Amelia stirred, her eyelids fluttering open. Elias, she murmured, her voice thick with sleep. What are you doing awake? Elias hesitated, the weight of the unusual hour and his unexplainable anxiety pressing down on him. I... I couldn't sleep, he admitted, his voice strained. Something woke me up. Amelia's brow furrowed in concern. But you always sleep like a log, she said her voice laced with drowsiness. I know, he replied, his gaze fixed on his clasped hands. It's just, something feels off, Amelia. I can't put my finger on it. Amelia reached out, her touch warm and familiar, 
a beacon of comfort in the sea of disquiet. Don't worry, darling, she murmured, her voice a soothing bomb. We'll figure it out together. Yet, even as her words washed over him like a gentle wave, Elias couldn't shake the feeling that their tranquil life had been disrupted by an unseen hand. A mystery hung in the air, a riddle waiting to be solved. The disquiet lingered as they went about their day. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee and Amelia's familiar morning hum couldn't dispel the shadow that had settled over Elias. Breakfast was a quiet affair, punctuated only by the clinking of silverware and the occasional rustle of the morning paper. Amelia noticed his preoccupation, her gaze lingering on him with unspoken concern. Is everything all right, Elias? She finally asked, her voice laced with apprehension. Elias forced a smile. Just a restless night, he lied, unable to bring himself to share the unease that nodded him. He couldn't explain the feeling, let alone articulate it to Amelia. It was a primal disquiet, a sense that something was amiss in the very fabric of their reality. As the day wore on, Elias found himself drawn to the heart of Gaslight Alley. The labyrinthine streets, usually bustling with activity, seemed strangely deserted. The usual street vendors hawking their wares, the children playing hopscotch, the gossip swirling between neighbors, all were absent. The alley held its breath, as if waiting for a cue. 